Because I think that, ultimately, if you're doing something that just, you know, only affects you, it's stupid or it's dangerous or whatever, then that's your business, it's your life, you know? But, to actually put at risk those around you, and to have no regard for that, you know, I, I, I talk about driving, and that, that, that's a big one to me. Uh, the things that people do on the road that are just so stupid, and hey, if you don't care about yourself, that's one thing, but yeah, keep in mind that you're putting other people in danger, too. Anyway, th th this is a roundabout way of me trying to tell a story. Um, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Well, okay. Well, that worked out. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, I got bit by this cat at work, and, and, and not to make it this long, drawn-out story, because obviously it's... it is what it is, you know. It I pretty much already told you the story just now, a cat bit me, you know, what's what's there more to tell, but I guess it's the circumstances and what happened afterwards that are the, 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 the story, anyway. <coughs> so this guy is, uh, brings in um, this cat into work, um, uh, I think it was on the our board for not eating or something like that. Uh, they call for a triage, I get up front, and the guy's just standing there, he doesn't have a cat, and I'm just like, do you have... The cat's name was Orange. And, uh, he said that it was, that it was out in his car, uh, because he didn't have a carrier. You know, it, it's this cat that lives outdoors. I mean, I always hate when people say that, that, that they own the, the... Well, it's usually a cat, that they own it. But it, it just lives outside, and we just, like, throw food outside. Well, th then you don't own it. it. It's not yours, it's... It's a stray, you know, that means that it's a stray cat. Okay? You don't actually own this thing, it just runs free, and whatever. Bonus! Um, I guess another goal for myself here would be try to get perfect bonus rounds every time. You know, I mean, it, it, it can be done, but just one little slip-up can, can cost you uh, the whole thing. I'm gonna say there's just not enough time to, to make a mistake. Um, but anyway, so he has no carrier. So I go in the back. I'm looking for something to like give to this guy, so he can go back. So how how do you drive around with with, with like a, a a stray cat like or loose in your car? That's what gets me too. Again, are you not concerned for your safety? I mean, what if the cat freaks out and you? I don't know. You end up in an accident. Come on. Um. Okay, we can do that. All right. Anyway, uh, I say anyway a lot. I know I've gotten called out for ums and errs, but I, I, I say anyway a lot, or whatever. That's another one. So I go in the back, I'm trying to find something for the... I finally, I find a carrier. Um, I go back up front, and now the guy's gone too. I'm thinking, okay, is he outside? No, he's in the bathroom. He's in the bathroom. Okay, you're at an emergency clinic. I, is this an emergency or isn't it? If you've got time to go to the bathroom... <laughs> you know, I, I'm trying to think of like other emergency situations where someone's just like, yeah, but you know what? Uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom first. Uh, I gotta take care of that. Um. So he's in the bathroom. Finally, he comes out. I give him the carry. He goes outside. He gets the cat. Um. I could see through the door of the carrier that uh, it wasn't looking too good. It, it it was just this ragged, nasty looking cat and. And so my first thought was, I'm thinking about, what if it has an upper respiratory infection? So what if it's something that's contagious? So I need to get it into um, one of our exam rooms and keep it away from everybody else. We get in the exam room. Uh, I can just... <coughs> I can just see that the cat's not doing too well. You know, it, it's struggling to breathe. It, uh, it, it just looks horrible. And I got concerned because my job is to help animals in need. And, you know, even though I was concerned about, you know, infection, uh, all of our equipment's in the back, you know, oxygen and, and everything that we need to to help this thing is in the back. So, um, I take the cat in the back, and um, I actually got a, a TPR on it, you know, for those not in the medical field, that's a temperature, pulse, and respiration. Um, the, uh, the doctor came over, took a look at it. Um, the one thing I had forgotten to do was weigh it. You know, we have to weigh every animal that comes in, you know, because medications go by weight, blah, blah, blah. 
So, I put the cat on the scale. Now, if you're holding an animal on the scale, the, the pressure of your own hands is going to alter... Oh, oh, crap, 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 crap. I gotta go all the way around. Is going to alter the result of the weight. So you've got to let go of the animal. And I did, but I didn't want him to, like, run off the scale. Uh, so I kind of kept my hands near him behind his head. You know, now this cat is, like, sick. It's, it's struggling to breathe, it's... It, it was in no way acting like it was going to be fast or quick by any means. But it did, it was on that scale, and my hands were like behind its head, and it just spun around and grabbed me, and then reflexively I must have yanked my, my hand back to get it out of his mouth, and it like shredded my finger, like his tooth like shred this line like it's, it's pretty deep it's pretty deep um now i've been bit before at work you know a little nip here a little scratch there no big deal um i've only <laughs> i guess i need to say this is that uh, a couple years ago i was bit by a dog and it was not it was a pretty nasty bite and so i ended up um at uh, the emergency room the human emergency room where uh because stupid me, you know, at that point, because where I worked was a shitty hospital with that didn't care about anyone's safety. And I guess you got you got to worry about your own. I know. I keep saying that. You know, you just got to look out for yourself. But I'd never been vaccinated for rabies, and so when this dog bit me, the status of the dog was unknown because it was just some piece of shit trash at, at Petco. I'll also talk about that sometimes. I used to work the vaccine clinics at Petco. That's where this happened. And just the the, the trashiest pieces of shit came through that door. Like, you wouldn't believe. I can't believe I did that for as long as I did because it was just the most... You just saw the worst of human life <laughs> in, a, in a Petco store at these damn vaccine clinics from these cheap-ass... Well, okay, I'm getting angry right now. <laughs> I, better, I better tone it down a bit. I guess that's a story for another time, but the point is is that I was at that... That day I was vaccinated for rabies. A, bun a series of rather painful injections. And no, it's not just one, it's several. Um, um, one in my arm, two in my ass, uh, two in my upper thighs. It's just craziness. I want my coin. Thank you. There's like no worse sight in this game than seeing a, a, a coin like heading for that bottom pipe, because once it goes through there, it's gone. Um... So anyway, so this cat bites me. Um, now here's the thing that freaked me out. I mean, yeah, it was a bad bite, but I probably still wouldn't have flipped out too much. I mean, I did. I was, like, swearing, and then I was like, oh, jeez, am I going to get in trouble for causing a scene, you know? But, so I immediately, so the cat jumps off the table after it bites me. Somebody else grabbed a blanket, caught it, and took it back over to uh, the table. By that point, I was already at the other station, with the sink, and I'm washing my hand off. So, within, like, a matter of less than a minute, I, like, look up from washing my, my finger off, and it's just blood everywhere. They're, like, doing CPR on this cat. It's dying. <laughs> That's what... Fr and, and it proceeded to die, and they couldn't even save it. So, it, what freaked me out was that this thing flipped out, bit me, and now, like, a minute later, it's dead. You know, so I'm like, what did this thing have? What did this cat have? You know, I mean, honestly, what it looked like to me was just a really bad upper respiratory that had been going on for a very long time. But still, I think what really freaked me was that it died after it bit me. Um, and it was a pretty bad wound, too. So I ended up at the emergency uh, hospital... Um, the emergency room of the hospital again. Now I'm thinking I may need, I'm probably just going to need like one booster of the rabies vaccine. If that, you know, I don't know. Um, but I get there and, um, you know, to shorten the story up, basically what happens is they're telling me that I've got to get the entire series of vaccines all over again. Which 
since then I've been told that that was wrong of them, they shouldn't have done it. Uh, but anyway, quick note is that um, the irony of that day is huge. There's lots of things that, you know, we, me, I, we, whatever, at work do to animals that I had been doing, you know, well, every day, but I had just been doing that morning. And now those very same things were being done to me. You know, I was triaged. I was, you know, at work we put animals in holding cages, you know, while the owners are figuring out what they want to do. Um, I was putting to, into a holding area. At one point I looked at the wall, there was a sign that said, you know, patient holding area. I'm like, that's great, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in a holding cage. That's great. You know, we have to restrain animals. Um, and when I got the, the vaccines, one of the things that they wanted to, which was different than the last time, is that they wanted to inject it into, one of them was like into the wound, into my finger. I was like, are you fucking crazy? So I'm like, if you're going to do this, you're going to have to hold my arm down, because I'm going to, you know, my reflexes, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be jerking it back and moving it. So they actually had to like hold my arm down when they did it, so just as I restrain animals at work, now I was being restrained. It's, the, the, the whole thing was just so ironic. Oh, come on. There we go. I hate when an enemy, like, lands right where uh, Slip Ice is uh, paused, trying to freeze, because the chance the enemy could get back up again, you know, before uh, the, the Slip Ice's cycle is complete, if that makes any sense. Where are we at? We're at 343. I'll be happy just if I break um, my old high score there. I mean, we got a long ways to go for that, but... Uh, so anyway, so I'm at the hospital. I mean, what kills me is that nobody... I had a, my finger wrapped up, obviously. Nobody... Well, until they gave me the injection in it. Nobody unwrapped it and looked at it. Nobody cleaned it. I'm glad I cleaned it at work, because... <laughs> It just seemed like as soon as they knew that it was a worker's comp case, I think that hospitals kind of pad the bill. You know, I, I, I think that they do unnecessary things or, um, or charge more because they know they're going to get paid. They know that it's a worker's comp thing. They know that the person's insurance, uh, the employer's insurance has to pay for it, and they just go kind of crazy with charges, and it just, and I even said it at the time, I was like, is this really necessary? I've already had these vaccines. Do we really have to go through it all over again? <clears throat> you know, they did the ones in my legs again. Um, anyone who, <laughs> I can't imagine many people have unless you're in this field, um, if you haven't had rabies shots, I'm telling you, they are quite painful. Uh, I don't know if I could describe them other than burning. It's like a, it's like somebody's injecting fire into you. That's like the, the best way that I can describe it. Um, <clears throat> so at one point, the, uh, I guess, technician, nurse, whatever, um, that was going to do it, um, was kind of like, okay, let's see what we're working with here. Now I'm thinking the last time I got these shots, they were in my ass, they were in my legs. So I like kind of go for my pants, take my drop my pants. He was like, uh, no, um, I, I was talking about your finger. And I'm thinking, okay, he wants to see the wound, okay. Anyway, long story short is that he's, he's, he's gonna inject some of this, like, into the wound, like, or, like, right around the edge of it. And I'm like, are you fucking insane? I, I it, that's when they pinned my arm down and did it, and I'm just got, like, tears in my eyes, and it hurts so much. I'm like, they did not do this last time. I'm not a good patient. I know that. I don't like IV catheters. I don't want one in me. Uh, they did that. I got IV antibiotics. It just seems so over the top because these are all things that didn't happen last time. These are all things that did not happen last time. And I just couldn't understand why they were, why they were this time. I It just seemed very unnecessary, so I had to get the, the injections all over again. Um, and then from and and from there, as always, because I've been through this before. Anytime it's a workers' comp place, nobody will. Nobody wants to acknowledge that. Nobody wants to deal with that. You can give them the address of where to send the bill, and they just 
it's, it's like they don't care. You know, you're at the pharmacy trying to get your antibiotics, and they're like, oh well, we you've got to pay for it. Even though I've got all the insurance information with me. That's what kills me. I had the most, you know, last time I felt I had even less. This time I had the most detailed insurance information. I want that coin. Thank you. Uh, me and my coins. Gotta get the coins. Such an unhealthy obsession. Well, I don't know if it's unhealthy, it, it, it's, but it, it, it is an obsession nonetheless. Um, yeah, you stop right there. So it just kills me that, you know, you're just trying to help yourself and you can't even do that. You know, you've got to jump through all these hoops and they want you to pay for things up front even though it's it happened at work. You shouldn't have to pay for it yourself. But no, they want their money. <laughs> 